I didn't come from another planet. I wasn't bitten by a radioactive bug. I'm not a rich genius. My parents weren't mutants. I don't have a special ring, and I can't travel through time and space. I didn't choose the life of a hero. It chose me. You're a very lucky man. We were able to save your arm. We just had to make a few changes. This is gonna be good. Hi, my name's Chris and I like to make things. Today, Steampunk Robotic Mechanical Arm. Because you know you want one. I just need to say one thing before we get started is on the video I make an arm for the right arm of your body. However, the actual pattern is for the left arm because I figured actually people will probably want to have their left arm more incapacitated than their right arm when they're doing stuff. However, if you want to make a right arm, just print the patterns and flip them over and that'll be the right arm. I just don't want it too confusing in the video. Let's go. So start by printing out the pattern, making sure that you're printing it actual size. Line up the alignment marks on any of the overlapping pieces and tape them together. Today I'm using my computer with its nice bright screen instead of a window so I can see through the paper and match up the marks. Use the print guides and a ruler to verify that you've printed the pattern at the correct size. Now you're all ready to cut out your pattern pieces and trace them onto the foam. Make sure to mark all the alignment marks and extend the line in so it stays on the piece when you cut it out. Use a pen to mark a dot in the center of each circle so you know where to punch the holes when the time comes. The dotted lines are just there to give you an indication of where other pieces will overlap. Except for here on piece number 9 where you're actually going to cut on the dotted line to create a second piece out of thinner foam with all the swirly bits cut out. There's another piece with a swirly design that we just need to transfer onto the foam. So I'm going to use my pen to create indentations by tracing over the design on the paper. Then I can lift my paper up and retrace following the indentations on the foam. This isn't the most accurate technique for transferring a pattern, but it can give you a pretty good idea where the lines need to go. Once you have the lines drawn, go over and over them with your pen until you create nice deep indentations in the foam. Once everything is traced, you can start cutting. Grab your super sharp knife and cut directly on the pen lines. Make a big fancy stack with all the pieces you just cut out, then grab your glue gun. Start by gluing piece 2 to piece 1, gluing the circle that points outward into the circle that points inward. Glue the rest of that edge, matching the ends of both pieces and the alignment points. Whenever I glue a section, I like to glue the far end first to make sure that it's going to line up with the other piece. Then I can go back and glue the alignment points in the middle, stretching or compressing the foam to match if I need to. Uh oh, looks like I got too excited about gluing and forgot to punch the holes. So you can either go back in time and punch them, or punch them right now. There are 8mm holes and 12mm holes, and the pattern will tell you which is which. Now you can finish gluing the forearm piece together to create a tube-like structure. Glue piece 5 to piece 4, lining up points I, J, and K. Give it a little curve with your hands, and fix up any gaps where it isn't quite perfectly glued. Now take that piece 4 and 5 combo and glue it to piece number 3, lining up points P, F, G, and H. Not sure how the P got in there. And make it into an arm tube by matching points L, M, and N. Okay, before you go any further, make sure to try on these pieces and make sure they actually fit on your arm. If it makes you feel way stronger than you used to feel, you've got it right. Obviously, the last thing we would want is our elbow sticking out, so let's make a sweet cover for it by gluing together pieces 6 and 7. Flip it right side out, and form it a little bit with your hands to make it an elbowish kind of shape. Glue piece 49 and 50 together to make one long piece. This piece will follow the top edge of the arm. Try it out first to see if it will fit. It will likely be just a little bit too short, in which case you can just give it a little stretch and the foam will magically lengthen and glue it down. Boom. Magic. Stretch the foam on the inside of the arm joint so it doesn't pinch your skin when you close your arm. You'll do this on the curved edge of piece 5 and piece 1. Cut a strip of foam 5mm wide by 16cm long, and then make a whole bunch of equally spaced slits that go halfway through the foam. 
I space these out about every five millimeters. Cut out every second piece and you've got a strip of gear teeth. Just remember you need a really sharp knife for this, otherwise you're just going to end up with a messy, messy thing. Glue that strip around one of the half circles on the forearm piece, cutting off the excess and using it for the other side. Take your two piece 51s and glue them around the outside edges of your elbow protector. You might need to stretch your foam just a tiny little bit so the ends meet up at the center alignment point. Now for the hinges we're going to use 7 16 inches outside diameter vinyl tubing. I won't go too much into the technique right now because you can learn all about it in my how to make pivoting hinges tutorial video. Push the tubing through from the inside of the upper arm piece going through the lower arm piece and then through the elbow protector. Glue one piece number 12 on the forearm section lining up the holes and keeping the cutout slot parallel with the seam on the arm. Glue piece 36 lining up the hole with the upper arm hole. Glue the other piece 12 on top of that keeping the cutout line parallel to the seam. Now we want the gears and gizmos and thingies to look like they're coming out from beneath pieces 9 and 10. So we're going to cut away half the thickness along the front curve of piece number 10 and the back curve of piece number 9. Make your first cut 5mm deep and then make a perpendicular cut meeting up with the first cut to create a step in the foam. Repeat the same process on the cutout in piece number 10. It's a little bit tricky so just take your time, do it slowly and carefully. Be sure when you're doing this not to cut your fingers off. And now you can glue piece number 10 into place on the forearm. Glue piece 38, 40 and 47 on top of piece 37. Piece 42 on top of 41 and then slide those into place under the undercut of piece number 10. You'll definitely want to test the placement of these parts before you commit to gluing them down, including piece number 9. You might find that you want to trim a little off the back of piece 42 depending how deep your undercut goes. Once you're super happy with how it's going to look, go ahead and glue it all down. Now we want gears 44 and 45 to mesh together so they look like actual gears that could actually do something. So you might need to trim a little bit extra off them so that once they're stuck underneath the cutaway they don't overlap each other. Once you've got the gears glued down you can glue piece 46 and 43 on top of them. Glue pieces 28, 27, 26 and 25 in place and don't forget a little dot to make it pretty. Now we'll make some fancy rivety things by pressing and twisting vigorously with our pen in various spots and poking some holes with our pen in various other spots. Add two 12mm circles to fill in some space and half of a circle to be the center of the gear. And if you really like poking holes in things now's your chance because you get to do some more. Now just add your connecting rod so everything is connected and that's all the gadgets all done. Cut an 8mm wide by 20mm long strip of foam and glue it along the curve on the front edge of piece number 10, trimming off the ends to match the piece underneath. Ok, we need to make another thing. Let's call it the acid core unit. Glue piece 30 over top of piece 11, bend it around into a curved shape and glue the end caps on, which happened to be piece number 20. This gets glued in the standard acid core unit placement which is on the underside of the arm as shown here. Ok, now grab the swirly piece number 9 that you cut and it's going to go over top of the regular piece number 9. The only thing about the swirly one is it's going to seem a little bit short because it has to go around the other one which is curved outwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to just stretch it a little bit until it matches up with the one underneath. Once you're happy with the fit you can glue it down. Cut one more strip of foam and glue it over the inside edge of the swirly piece. If there are some holes you forgot to punch while you were doing your punching and it's too hard to punch now that it's made into an arm shape, you can get by with cutting them out afterwards with your scalpel. Alright, you made it through the first half, well done! If you want to see the second half, that'll be coming in about a week and I'll post a link to that at the end of this video. Obviously the link won't be there until a week from today. So you might want to subscribe so that you know when it comes out. And of course if you want to buy the pattern, the link is here and in the description below. Thanks for watching, have a great day! See ya. It's hard to be looking at a fidget spinner and know where you're going. <laughs> okay. This is scarier than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs>